for an introduction of the speaker by Reverend Victoria McKenzie. Uh, amen. 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 You have placed in your bulletins a rather lengthy bio that you can read on your own. Amen. 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 I just want to say that since I have met our speaker, the Reverend Dr. Juana A. Harris, she exemplifies what is in her bio. She Amen. is a servant leader. Yes. Amen. Amen. She is humble. Yes. To meet her and talk with her and then read her bio, you think it was two different people. Because all of that stuff that's on paper, she doesn't care about what it is. Amen. What she cares about is the soul of human beings. Amen. I met some of her parishioners this weekend and just listening to them and watching them, some of her teachings I can tell are through that family. And they love their pastor. Amen. So much that they stopped their plans for this afternoon and came here. Amen. And I thank God for that. Yes. That shows me love beyond love for their pastor. Amen. 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 And so if you want to know anything else, you can read it. But most of all, pray that God will send the Holy Ghost Father yes. Amen. upon our speaker. Amen. And that through her, God will speak to each of us individually to give us what we need yes, Lord. collectively as the body of Christ. Amen. That as we leave these hallowed grounds, we can take her words that God has given to her for us and spread the good news of Jesus the Christ. Yes. Amen. With that same fire and Holy Ghost vigor. Amen. Amen. And so now we will hear selections. <laughs> That's more than one. <laughs> See, then he. The Cairo Metropolitan Choir. And then the next person you will hear is their pastor, the Reverend Dr. Tawana Harris. Amen. Amen.
our Savior. We come to you just like we are. We come to you, God, tired. We come to you a little bit weary. We come to you with some aches and some pains, but we come to you with the praise on our lips. We come to you giving glory because you're worthy. We come to you because you are behind your cross. Yes, Lord. So that they don't even see twine, but they only experience you. Holy Spirit, oh, thank you. Yes. speak yes. in this house. Yes. Oh, Holy Spirit, open up ears. Yes, Holy yes. Spirit. Holy Ghost, change the lives. Yes. 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 In Jesus' name, in Jesus we pray. Name. Giving honor to God who is my life. Yes. Usually preachers, that's the first thing that they say. But I really mean that thing. All right. All right. All right. First, giving honor to God who is, is my, yes. my life. Amen. Amen. I praise him for the opportunity to stand here at Bray Temple on the occasion of 75 years of ministry. Amen. That's what you got. Y'all look real good for 75. Amen. Amen. I praise God so much for this great pastor who has been such an encouragement to me since I've come to serve in the third Episcopal district. Um, there's not a lot of sisterhood among preachers. Amen. But, but two of my sisters are in this pulpit and I'm so excited certainly for, for your pastor but also for the presence of Pastor Redfern who came off of the To my new sister, Pastor Turner, I look forward to hanging out with you. God bless you. Certainly for the other pastor who is here with us, God bless you for your presence here today. Um, to all of the ministers, officers, and leaders who are gathered to the saints and ain'ts who found their way. To the house on this afternoon, God bless you. Uh, I praise God for the music ministry that has gone forth on um, today, Bray Temple, and also for the Carter Metropolitan Choir who is here yeah. under the capable leadership of Sister Muriel Don Johnson. We just give God praise. Amen. Amen. For what God is doing in the house. Amen. We do bring you greetings from the Carter Metropolitan Church down the street in Detroit. And I'm so honored and privileged to serve there as pastor. Thank you so much congregation for coming out to share with us on this evening. I know some of y'all are real tired and sleeping, but you pushed ahead. So God bless you for joining us today for this celebration. I think I thanked about everybody who's in the house. Holy Ghost, thank you for being here. Yeah. 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 Let me share with you that there is indeed a word from the Lord. Amen. That word is found uh, this afternoon in the New Testament letter of Colossians. All right. Now that I'll preach from the whole Bible, but we're going to try Colossians tonight. That's okay. Amen. Colossians chapter 3 is where we are. We're going to do just a little jumping around, so, so catch me if you can. Colossians chapter 3, we're going to start at verse 1. Colossians chapter 3. The word of God reads as thus. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is. 
seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. If you would please jump down to verse 14. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, Yes. You are called to peace yes. and be thankful. Yes. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. <coughs> Singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Verse 17 says, and whatever you do, yes. whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, yes. giving thanks to God the Father through him. Yes. The word of God for the people of God, and we say together, thanks be to God. There is a phrase that is becoming quite popular nowadays. The phrase is, you only had one job. <coughs> Anybody ever heard that? Yeah. Well, usually, somebody says that if a person has has to perform a task and they fail oh. at the task. Oh. Imagine you, imagine for instance, a server who drops a tray of food that he or she is carrying. You might say, you only had one job. Right. Right. Or perhaps a, a punter screws up a play in a major football game. <laughs> Might say, you only had one job. You only had one job can be uh, a frustrated or a sarcastic response to a person or a thing that has failed to be effective when it's most necessary. They messed it up. Yeah. when it really counted. You only have one job that's spoken to people who have failed, messed up, gotten it wrong, and it doesn't matter that they had good intentions. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter that they had a great strategy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if they tried their hardest. Mm -hmm. The phrase, yeah. you only had one job. Amen puts a lot of pressure on us That's because right. it, it becomes abundantly clear that if we somehow botch our only job, mm -hmm. our only service, or our only purpose, then somebody else is impacted. The people who were waiting on their food now have to wait longer because the server dropped the tray. Yeah. Uh, the team on the verge of winning as I was seeking the Lord about what he wanted me to share with the congregation on the occasion of their 75th anniversary, a congregation that has been through many dangers, toils, yes. and snares, a congregation that has seen people come and go, yes. pastors come and go, a congregation that has shared the gospel and been committed to ministry, a congregation that is trying to survive and thrive. All right. Yeah. The thought occurred to me. Uh, I tried to shake it from my brain. I tried to quickly dismiss it, but this thing wouldn't leave me alone. I couldn't help but wonder if God ever looked at Great Temple and said, you only had one job. I wonder if God looks at Carter Metropolitan and the third Episcopal District of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church and screams out loud from his throne in heaven, y'all only had one child. All right. Great Temple is 75 years old. It hasn't been easy to keep the doors open. It hasn't been easy to keep the membership motivated. It hasn't been easy to feed the community. But somebody heard of God yeah, to be yeah, the yeah. 
church. And somebody heard the command of God to go out into all of the world and teach and preach and minister. Somebody had some good intentions. There were some leaders who really meant well. There were some people who really wanted to support the church and even the pastor. But there were some things they may have gotten messed up along the way. Somebody dropped the ball once or twice. And there were a few somebodies over the course of 75 years who may have failed to follow through on a task. And God was watching it all play out in the amphitheater of glory. And in the midst of being a God who's slow to anger and abounding in steadfast in the midst of being patient and long-suffering. God sees our fumbling attempts at ministry, our incomplete passes, and yells out, like some of y'all yelled out last week during the Michigan game. that as the church, we have one very big, very important yes. job. Yes. And that's to connect people to God, yes. to yes. cultivate yes. relationship with Jesus, yes. and to spread love with the help of the Holy Ghost. Now, yes. our one job has so many working parts, yes. and it requires us to work yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Your theme for your 75th yes. anniversary is unity in love. The songwriter said we are one in the spirit. Yes. Yes. We are one yes. in the Lord and we pray that our unity will one day be restored and they'll know we are Christians by our love. Yes. When the world looks at the church do they know we're Christians because of how we are? If our members weren't our members, would they know we're Christians? By the way that we love. If the world sees us unified in love and service, then maybe the world would want to join us. If the world sees us opening our arms and making a place for people who have no place, then they will want to come and join us. If sees us passionately worshiping God and sincerely treating each other with, with kindness, they will take us serious. All right. All right. We've got to show the world that we can have a bake sale and feed the hungry. Amen. We've got to, uh, we can have a choir anniversary and collect coats for children well, who need well, them in the community. We've got to show each other love so that we can come together and be in service together and worship God together yes. because we are stronger together. That's right. Yes. Yes. God is love. Yes, he is. And love is our one job. Yes. God is peace yes. and peace is our one job. God is unified with the Son and unified with the Holy Spirit so well, our job right. is unity too. In Paul's letter to the church at Colossae, he was encouraging people uh, on how to stay in effective relationships with each other, but also how to do the work of ministry. The members of this particular church were new to the faith, and I'm sure that trying to vision a way uh, a strategic plan for the church, but, uh, but also embrace this new understanding of who God was, was quite a balancing act for the people there. I'm sure that the church was filled with some people who had a lot of great gift days. I'm sure that the church had one or two folks who were really good with their hands and they could fix anything. And maybe two or three people who were good in the kitchen and you wanted to make sure that whenever there was something that you had to cook, they were there. And maybe there were a couple of people who were some really strong teachers in the congregation. And, and there were probably 
truly some people who were really, really skilled musically. And among this group at this church, uh, there were people uh, who had been radically converted to this new message and understanding of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But also at this church, there were some folks who accepted Christ, but couldn't quite catch their breath with all this new stuff that was going on. This new teaching and this new way of worshiping and this all of this new kind of preaching and what are these new songs that y'all were doing. And even though they all had different gifts and different approaches to worship, Paul sent this letter to remind them of their one job, which was to be unified in thought, word and deed, unified in theology, and unified in their testimony, unified in love, unified in the way they study, unified in worship, unified in service. So in the course of the text, Paul gives the church at Colossae seven tips on how to be successful at faith and ministry. Yeah, awesome. As a practical theologian, I would be remiss if I showed up and we just celebrated 75 years of Bray Temple as a church and then we went home. But I have a responsibility to share with the help of the Lord uh, how Bray Temple can make it 75 more. Right. There are seven tips that I will share with you and they are not my tips. Actually, these seven tips are not even just for Bray Temple. These seven tips that I will share with you this afternoon are for everybody who has a job. Yeah. Everybody who has a gift or a calling. They're for everyone who's trying to work out their soul salvation in love yeah. and in fear of God. The very first tip is see from God's perspective. Okay. See from God's perspective. If you want your ministry to thrive, if you want things to turn around in your relationships, you can't look at things from your natural understanding. Amen. You have to put on the mind of Christ. Yes. Uh, you, have, you have to look past attitudes of yes. some people. Yes. Yes. You have to look past irritations yes. and realize you battle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. You've got to be able to look at mountains, and instead of being intimidated, you find out a spot on that mountain where you're going to focus your prayer, and you're going to pray hard and long enough until you see that mountain move. Uh -huh. All right, Jesus. Yes, yes. If you want to see victory in the midst of defeat, if you want to see abundance in the midst of lack, if you want to see a way made out of no way, then you have to see stuff from God's perspective. His, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. If you want to see from his perspective, you have to change your position. All right. If you want to see Come on now. from God's perspective, Preach, I ain't lost nothing, I'm just looking. Amen. That's right. If you want to see from God's perspective, yes. you got to change the direction that you look. Yes. Yeah. 
condition. Lift up your eyes to the hills from which cometh your help. All of your help comes from the Lord. Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. One mind, one goal, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one people. All right. Tip number two. Allow peace to bring you together. All right. Peace is freedom from disturbance. Yes. The word says that where the spirit of the Lord is, yes. there is liberty. There is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is no disturbance. There is no chaos. There is no discord. It is Amen. in his spirit. It's in the state of peace that the church begins to thrive and grow. I hope somebody's listening. Amen. When all God's children get together, there should be some peace. Yes. But do we allow peace to bring us together? Well, Scripture says that he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Scripture says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Scripture says, for God is not a God of confusion. All right. But of peace. Yes. So if I keep my mind on him, he will keep me in perfect peace. When the road gets rough and the going gets tough and the hills are hard to climb, he will call me his child and bless me indeed if I become a peacemaker. If I'm his child, yes. I can't misrepresent him right. by causing confusion. Yes. And separation right. in the house of God. If I am a child of God, I want to do things that cause us to work together so that we can be of one mind and one voice. You can have your conference claims paid and burn your mortgage and uh, break ground on a new building, but if you don't have peace, your ministry will die. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 If you don't want to mess up your one job as peacemaker, yes. Yes. then you have to love your enemies. Yes, Jesus. Amen. You have to forgive those who trespass yes. against Amen. you. Yes. You have to love your neighbor yes. as yourself. You, yes. you have to extend grace to your neighbor with the understanding that at some point you're going to need some grace to. Right. Yeah. Right. Number three. Be thankful. Amen. I never understood why church people are so miserable. That's All right. right. That's good question. How is it possible to serve a living Savior yes. who has miracle working power. Yes. A God who loves us beyond our thoughts and, and, and we never have a reason to be thankful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've stopped saying thank you when people hold doors open for us. Mm -hmm. it, it's no wonder why we don't know how to thank God when he opens doors yes. for yes. us. When you're thankful, yes. you find any opportunity to express yes. your gratitude. Yes. When you're thankful, you got to tell somebody, anybody, you don't care what just happened to you. Uh, well, why is the church the only place left on earth where it's improper to express thanksgiving? <laughs> It's, it's, it's proper, it's appropriate to express your thanksgiving for a field goal. It's, it's, it's proper and it's appropriate for you to express your thanks at an awards ceremony. But when I do it in church, people wonder what's wrong with me. All right, says thank you to me and I respond by your welcome. God bless you. People wonder what's wrong with me. We have so many reasons. Yes. Yes. To be thankful yes. to God. Yes. 
Your Bible says in everything. Give him thanks. We ought to thank him when everything is good and when all manner of hell has been unleashed in our lives. Because even when we got to go through, we have the assurance that we don't go through by ourselves. Because God promises that he'll never leave us, nor will he forsake us. When we are weak and when we are down to our last dime and we don't have any more strength left, he gives us his strength to fight our battles. He helps us to be more If 
If Jesus is Lord, there's no need for power struggles. Right. All right, Jesus. If Jesus is Lord, right. then his love, his authority governs every ministry, every leader, every ministry project. Is Jesus Lord? All glory to God. Are you leaning on him or are you leaning to your own understanding? Well, All right, yeah. Jesus. Is Jesus Lord today? Uh, is he the head of your life? Does he? Uh, do you seek his word and his approval before you make a move? Come is on, Jesus Lord right. right. oh, today? Oh, do you go where he wants you to go? And do you do what he wants you hey. to do? Do you lay hands and pray when he tells come you on, to? Come do on, you speak right. life yes. into yes. some dead situations? Yes. Do you bow? believe that you are more than a conqueror. Well, if, if Jesus is Lord, there is only one agenda, and that's him. All right, Jesus. Tips number five and six are very easy. We, I'm not going to spend any time on them because we do those without thinking about it sometimes. Paul told him, you got to teach and you got to sing. The only thing I'll say about that, if you don't love teaching and you don't love singing, let somebody do it who does. All right, All right. Amen. 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 The reason why is because people watch you. And people will develop a taste for what you do. And if you don't have any passion behind what you teach, and if you stand up and you don't have any passion about the hymns that we sing, then that passion won't be carried over into the people. All right. If they look at you and they see that you don't care, guess what? It won't be important for them either. Somebody got to see Jesus in Bible study. Somebody got to hear Jesus at choir I said they had to hear Jesus. Yes. All right. Yes. Which brings us to the very final thing that Paul shares with the church. He says, whatever you do, do it in the name of the Lord. Amen. Early in, in the message, I, I shared about the frustration of only having one job and messing it up. We know that our one job has many working parts and our, really, outside of being unified, outside of serving together, Outside of praising God together, outside of loving people, the heart of all of that is right here. It's giving people Jesus. Did y'all get that? Amen. That is the heart of what the church was created for, to give people Jesus. Yes, that's it. 